Hi everyone! Good afternoon! I hope you are all feeling fine today. Kindly give me a thumbs up on the comment section if you are ready for today's session. Alright, let's begin! I am Lynette Del Castillo and I will be discussing about how to swing your offline assessments to online work using quizzes. But before we learn how to use, to how to use quizzes, let me give you a quick demo of what experience is like for teachers administering quizzes and also for the students as they experience the game. In my screen, you can see two views. On the left side, you can see the teacher's screen or the teacher's view. And on the right side, you can see the student's screen or the student's view. Now, let's focus first on the teacher's screen. So, you will just have to type this link, quizzes.com, on the address bar. Okay? And then, just sign in to your own quizzes account. I will going to show you how to... Uh, create your own quizzes account a little later on. So since I already have my account, I will just go to my quizzes and select a particular quiz that I will be using for today's session. So I will just be selecting this, the Living Things quiz. And I could choose from these three options. But for the meantime, for today, I will show you how to play it live. Then, you can also pick your game mode. I will be picking the classic mode. And just select continue. Now, you will be directed to this um, page. Okay, so to play this game, this link will be available for your students. Joinmyquiz.com and the code will be generated. Note that this code is different every time. Even though you play uh, the same quiz, um, this will not uh, be the same, the code. So, as you play a quiz, another game code will be generated. Okay? The students can open this link on any device that has a web browser. So, it doesn't matter if they are using a mobile phone or um, a laptop. It also doesn't matter if they will be using an Android phone or an Apple, uh, Apple phone and iPhone. So as long as they can type this on the address bar that has a web browser, it will work. Then let's go to the student screen. So as a student, I will be typing joinmyquiz.com. Okay, and then just wait for it to load. And then just copy the game code that is generated in my teacher screen so I will just be copying that so it's three eight six six two nine okay so just enter a game the students will be asked to enter in a name so I will just put my type my first name okay um and this part uh please be strict on this because some students or some of your students might tend to make their classmates laugh by putting a school in appropriate name. So in my class, I always require my students to type their class number and their first name. Since some, some of my students have the same first name, for it to be less confusing. So it, it will be up to your requirements first if you want to ask them to put just their first name or first name and last name or last name only then once your student already is finished typing their names they can also um, edit the game settings if they want to put music on if they want to put sound effects on the memes turn it on and read aloud okay so for the memes um, you can also create your own meme set for the students to be more excited about it, to be more motivated, and for it to be more personal. For the read aloud, um, this will be a great tool, especially for the younger students that are still starting to read. Okay, for the meantime, I will be turning off the music and sound effects so that you can still hear me clearly. Once the setting is okay, I, the student will now start the game. 
And once the student starts the game already, back to the teacher screen, you can see already the participants on this corner, okay? And then on this a little left corner, you will see the number of students um, who are already in your game. So you will see how many students are you waiting for or if they are complete at the moment or, or some are having trouble in joining your quiz. On the student screen, you can see a lot of things that they can choose from. So as I click it, um, you can see that they can choose any theme that they will want. Then the gray theme, um, they can unlock it as soon as they play along. So for today, I will be choosing the original theme of quizzes, just the um, purple theme. Okay, so now the teacher will start the game. So this is the student screen and this is the teacher screen. Okay, so for today, I will just be turning off the sound effects so that it will not interfere with my voice. As you can see on the student screen, there is the timer that you can edit also in the settings later. You will see here the questions and the choices where your students will answer or choose an answer. Okay, so for example, this one. Okay, and that is how a correct answer will look like. So this is the meme that you can edit. On the teacher screen, you will see the leaderboard. Okay, so the students can take a look at this once in a while to see um, to see who is the student that is on the top rank. So th this can add to their motivation as well. You can also see the questions on, um, you can review the questions and then how many correct answers did the student got or incorrect answers on a particular question. For example, you're done playing with the game, just click on end game. And then um, the students will be prompt that the game has ended and the result, the summary of results will be also shown to the students, okay? Then you can also click this one to review the questions if you are using this as a review or motivation for your students. And you can also download the results. Yes, it is very downloadable. For the Windows users, you can um, download it um, through Excel. Okay, and you will see it through Excel. And for the Mac users, you can view it through numbers. Okay. I will show you how the results will look like. The results will be looking like this. So all the questions will also be displayed. And then you can also track how many correct answers your student got on this particular question, how many incorrect items, and unattended. And unattempted. So when it's unattempted, it means that they were not able to answer on time. Okay because the time limit already runs out, the timer already runs out. And then you can see here the player. And if the student skipped that question or did not answer, okay? So as you can see, there is a detailed feedback that will help you in assessing the student or your, or your lesson. Um, that's it, that's a glimpse on how Quizzes will work in your classes or in your um, virtual classrooms, okay? So for the coverage of today's session, um, you will learn how to create your own quizzes account, learn how to create your own quiz in quizzes, administer that quiz, and share your quizzes to your colleagues and to your students. What is quizzes and how will it motivate every student? So quizzes is also a quiz app that can help you create quizzes from multiple choices, self-responses, and even math formulas. So quizzes can also be excellent in a way to do formative assessment with your students because you can use quizzes to find out what your students already know or don't know 
I will be showing you how to create your own account in Quizzes. So just type quizzes.com in the address bar on any web browsers. So if you want to download it as an app, you can also do so by searching for Quizzes app and download it on your mobile phone. So it is available in the Play Store and on the App Store. Okay, so if you don't want to download it as an app, then you can um, do it on your laptops. Okay, just type quizzes.com and if you don't have any account yet in Quizzes, just click on sign up. Okay, and you will be directed to this page. Okay, so it will be asking you to link it to your um, email or to your Google account. So to be easier, just I will just sign up it with Google. Okay, that, and then it will um, give you a prompt to choose an account. So since I already have an account with quizzes, I will just log in using my account. Then. As easy as that, you already have your own quizzes account. So you can see here the quizzes website and this is what we call the dashboard. So you can see on the left side all the things that you can do with quizzes. What makes quizzes different? So it promotes um, student-paced learning and it gives better data and feedback. Because as we all know, there are a lot of platforms and tools that can be used for remote learning or for online distance learning. So how does quizzes stand out from all of them? I will be giving you more about it as we go along. In creating your own quiz and quizzes, you can even add images, GIFs, sound clips, and even math formulas. So as you can see in my example, I am typing here a math formula. If you are having a hard time to type this on Microsoft Word or in Pages or to um, any word processing um, document, then I think this could be a great help for you by using quizzes. So I will now be showing you how to create your own quizzes. Back to the website, I will just need you to um, focus your attention here under my profile picture and name and you will see there create a new quiz. So just click on create a new quiz, wait for it to load and then name this quiz. So I will be typing my, type, my topic living things and then choose a subject so science you can also choose another subject if you think that you have tackled it also in your lesson okay and then just click next okay and then wait for it then you can see here um the test types that you can choose from multiple choice checkbox fill in the blanks poll and open-ended for this um quiz I will be choosing multiple choice then you can already start typing your question so for example which is not an example of a living thing so there as I am typing you can see here on the right side what it looks like on your students devices Okay. And then you can already start typing your answer options. So for example, dog, mug, paper, I mean plant, and cat. Okay. So as you can see, there are um, a button that says, there is a button that says add another option. So it doesn't mean that you will only limit yourself into four answer options. So you can add another answer option if you want to make your um, question more challenging for your students. Then, of course, don't forget to check the correct answer. So which is not an example of living thing? What is the answer? Of course, it's the mug. Okay, so it's not a living thing. And then, you can also edit the time. The minimum time is 5 seconds and the maximum is 15 minutes. 
So you can choose the longer time if you think that the question is um, difficult or it requires the students to type in their answer, especially if uh, for the lower level students that, um, that are not used to typing. So you can require the longer time. Or if uh, you have solving um, problems, okay, so that uh, it will be, um, so that your students will be given enough time to answer, okay. And then for this question, I will just pick 20 seconds. You can also add um, media to make your questions more appealing. So for example, there. Okay, so you can already, from your desktop, you can just drag and drop the picture that you want to use for your, um, for your um, picture, okay? And then it will, you will see the picture there. Then if you don't want it, you can just simply remove and delete the picture, okay? You can also add images um, to each of your answer option. Especially, this can be helpful if your students are um, starting to read. So, they can easily depend on the pictures. Okay. Once you're done with your first question, you can just click Save. And there you have it. That's uh, how your question number one will look like. And just add a new question okay, until you finish the rest of the test. And just click Done. As I've mentioned earlier, quizzes promote student-paced learning. So the students can see the options, the questions, and the answers on their own devices. So they don't need to look at their teacher's screen anymore just to see um, the questions. Because on the other tools, on the other platforms, the students still need to um, take a look on their teacher's screen because it is not the questions are not shown on their own device. As I have also shown earlier, you can also edit the time limit um, so that your students can do it at their own pace. So if you think that the question is too difficult, then you can edit to a more longer time or if it's an easy question, then to a shorter time. But you can also be um, setting the time limit in a way that you know that the students can really think of their answer and not just focus on the speed but also on the accuracy. Okay, at times when we will use this as a formative assessment, the students will tend to have mistakes, okay? That will happen if, for example, they don't understand the lesson yet or they still need um, they still need follow-up on a certain topic. So, um, another great feature of quizzes is that it allows students to retake the question or the specific question. So, you can also edit that as you make the quiz. In that way, they can review their answers and you can reassess the student's progress as well. So, another accessibility feature includes the language support, image zoom, and read aloud. For the language department because they asked me how to integrate spelling with quizzes okay so this happens um, they will not be typing spe um, spell the word banana okay because obviously you cannot really type that question so by read aloud um, you can ask the question what is the spelling of banana in an exciting way and your students can just type in their answers okay another feature of the quizzes is their quizzes library so you can mix and match questions using the teleport feature so for example you don't have the time already to create your own quiz or you want to get ideas from the other teachers about a certain topic then you can just teleport um their um, ready-made quizzes to your quiz account so how will you do that I will be showing you in a while this is the quiz that oh, we have made earlier so I will just be clicking teleport because for example I want to get ideas from the other teachers I will just be typing my topic so it's living things 
and just try to search for the available um, quizzes here on the library. So for example, I will be choosing this kind of um, quiz. So as I hover my mouse on this type of quiz, you will see here all the questions inside it. So now I can start to review the questions. So I am reading. And then you will assess if you were able to teach this topic to your students. Will it be easier for them or will it be too difficult? So once you were okay with the question, then just click add. So it will be automatically added to your quiz account. See, question two teleported. So it's like you choose a question and then you add it to your um, quiz account. So for example, question number four is too easy. So I will not be including that in my quiz. Um, I think this is just like you're doing an online shopping and then you're just gonna add to cart when you want something. But this one, you're just going to add to your quiz account. Okay, so for example, you already have reviewed everything on this quiz and you want another quiz. So just click another quiz and then read again, review. This one's a good question, so I will add it. Okay, question number four, I think I did not teach it yet. So maybe they will not be able to answer it. Question number four, this is uh, seven, this is okay, so I'll add it. So once you have completed all the questions, then just click this arrow. And then you will be redir redirected to your new quiz. So as you can see, all the quizzes, all the questions that we have teleported is here already. And just click done. And now um, you can now put an image to each of it or select the language, English. Once you're done, just save it. Then, for example, my students are grade 2. Then you can make it public to help the other teachers as well. And then click save. Okay, so quizzes also gives us a better data and feedback because it prioritizes with instance reports for each student and a class summary. Quizzes provides um, a very detailed feedback as like as what I've shown you earlier. So you can already see or assess the standing of the whole class. For example, which specific topic are they having a hard time? And also, it's not only for the whole class, but for each student. I will be showing it to you on how you can get the feedback from your quizzes account. Back to the quizzes website, you will see here on the left side, um, reports. So just click on reports. And then I will just um, be showing you, for example, this one, uh, this topic wherein your students have answered. Then you will see here an overview and summary of their progress. Okay, so for example, this specific um, student, you can see that he answered nine correctly and he got five mistakes okay once you click the name of the student it will give you a more detailed feedback so for example for question number one it is unattempted when it's unattempted it means that um your student was not able to answer it on time the timer runs out already and he did not even uh, try to answer something like that Number two, he got it correct. Number three, still at unattempted. And there, you can see how your students was able to um, progress in this specific activity. Now, as a teacher, you can simply look at the things also that you need to um, focus on. So, for example, all, all of your students got a mistake on question number four. So, maybe you can repeat that lesson or that topic or give more focus on that if um, two or more students just had a mistake on this then maybe you can just um, give them some follow-ups it is also available for printing if you want to document your students progress or just take a screenshot since we are all doing it online
Now I will be showing you how to assign homework, especially for the asynchronous activities for your students and how to link it to your um, learning management systems or to your Google Classroom. So just click on my quizzes to search for the assignment that you will be giving to your students. So for example, this is the assignment that I want them to work on. So you can just um, click on assign homework and then set a due date. So for quizzes, they have extended their due date until 30 days. So because of the current situation, um, they are kind and graceful enough to give an extension until 30 days but it's still up to you teachers on how long will you be setting your due date of course if you think that it will be too difficult for your students or it will require more attention then give them a more reasonable due date but if you think that the, that they can answer it easily then i think a minimum of three days will do why we also need to be considerate with those students because they will have a lot of online work um, these days okay and of course um, consideration also to the working parents of their students especially for the younger kids since they will still be very dependent to their parents especially in using um, gadgets and in technology so please let's give them um, an ample time to finish their activities so once you have set your due date so for example um on monday june 29th and then give them until 3 p.m so this is just an example and then click continue if you're just going to assign it somewhere but if you are going to assign it to your google classroom then click select you can also browse on the general settings here you can turn it on and turn it off. It depends on your requirement in your class. So now let's assign it to my Google Classroom. So for example, this is my only class. I will just um, be selecting this one and just click um, next. So here, now you can assign the game. So here, this quiz has been assigned to the Google Classroom. Okay. So you can go to your classes. And you will see that it, um, it was already imported to your Google Class. Once you have made um, a new class in, so in your Google Classroom, you can just click Update Google Classes so that it will be linked here on your Quizzes account. So just update and then wait for it to load and all your new classes will be linked here on your um, quizzes account. Okay, just in case that you are not using Google Classroom and you are using another kind of LMS, then you can just click this one, share the link. Okay, and then it will, um, it was copied already, then you can paste it to any platform that you are using so as easy as that you can already post your homeworks okay then i will just be showing you how um it was linked to my google classroom so this was the classroom that i um i was able to assign so i will just be click clicking it okay and then you can see here already inside the google classroom that i already posted a new assignment and it's living thing so you can also edit that out so you can just type please answer this for your review so something like that you can also edit what you want to say to your students and just like that it is already posted to your Google classroom if you don't have a Google classroom yet then please watch um, our, our other videos here on our YouTube channel. Last but not the least is how you create your own meme set. So just click on memes and then just um, 
click this create a new meme set and then just type the uh, or name the title of your meme set so for example meme one and then you can select public or private for now i will just be selecting the private one okay and then create a correct meme so it will be divided into two categories correct memes and incorrect memes correct memes will be shown randomly if your students was able to answer the question correctly and incorrect memes will be shown randomly as well if your student was um, not able to answer it um, correctly so let's do the correct meme first so you need to upload an image so for example your student was able to get a correct answer then for example I'll just be putting this check mark once it's done just click upload and then be creative teachers in typing your um, typing your message make it more fun and personal and for it to be more exciting to your students so for example Wow! There. You are awesome. So there. So you can really be creative on how are you going to um, create your meme. Okay. So once you're done, you can also um, just click done on your meme set and you're already uh, have created your meme set okay so that's a glimpse on how you can use quizzes in your own classes online so I have a question why are you going to start with quizzes now okay I will be giving you first um, your students can still play together virtually and even online okay so because of um, the current pandemic we are not able to go inside our classrooms and for sure your students will be missing the fun and the game that we do inside our classrooms so with quizzes they can still play together and have the same amount of fun that they are getting inside the classroom so they can also play it individually next you can set um, an extension or a due date so they will not be um, in a hurry in answering a specific activity or a task as I've mentioned um, it promotes a student paced learning so the student can answer it at their own pace okay so they can also review their answers if you think that they need to um, focus more on some topics and of course Lastly, it promotes independent practice. They can do it and answer on their own. And if they are having a hard time, they can still um, go back to the questions that they have a mistake or they have missed. So that's all for today's session. I hope that you will explore and enjoy quizzes in your own virtual classrooms. Enjoy learning. That's all.